Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. Has this ever happened to you? You go and you dig out your vintage Macintosh or you go buy one off eBay or something like that, only to discover that the hard drive is dead or dying? So what are you going to do? Just buy another SCSI hard drive? Well, I have a better solution. Today let's take a look at the new and improved Blue SCSI version 2. You may have heard about Blue SCSI before, so we're going to review all of the models available and tell you why the version 2 gives you the most bang for your buck. And if you like vintage computing and like blending a bit of the old and the new, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I have a lot more geeky videos just like this that I think you'll enjoy. First, let's talk about the problem. And I'm not talking about leaking capacitors on the logic board or the power supply or that 30 year old half AA battery that's inside this machine. We're talking about the hard drive. Now the hard drive in vintage Mac computers are generally SCSI hard drives. These were faster and a bit more expensive than the IDE hard drives that most PCs were using at the time. SCSI gave you better performance and also gave you the ability to daisy chain hard drives and devices so you could have more than two discs inside or externally plugged into your Macintosh computer. Years ago, when a hard drive failed in one of my vintage Macs, I'd scour eBay or local buy cells to get another replacement hard drive, hoping that that one would last the test of time. And while it is true that more modern or server-grade hard drives do last a bit longer, unfortunately SCSI was just not nearly as popular or affordable as IDE and ATA. So finding a working, affordable hard drive is just not making too much sense anymore, especially since they will all die sometime because nothing lasts forever especially if it's based on a bunch of moving parts. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, most PC manufacturers landed on using IDE, or ATA, PATA, as the hard drive connectivity standard. So a lot of PCs of the time period used IDE hard drives, and while some did use SCSI, it was more expensive, so most manufacturers decided it wasn't worth it, and to save a buck, they would sell a PC with an IDE hard drive. Now for retro PC enthusiasts, that means that you could just pick up an IDE to compact flash or an IDE to SD card adapter, put a card in, and you're good to go. The majority of old PCs usually work okay with these devices. Unfortunately, even Macs with IDE connectors don't seem to play too well with these. But most of the time, we're really concerned about SCSI, because Macintosh computers of this vintage only have SCSI internally, and until you get to the Power Max, there was no feasible way to use IDE inside of a Macintosh computer unless it was one of the low-cost performers that shipped with the IDE bus. But Macintosh computers of this vintage used SCSI, so when replacing your vintage hard drive for your vintage Mac, you're going to need a SCSI solution. And that's where the blue SCSI comes into play. This is the original blue SCSI. It's an internal model, has a 50-pin header on there, and is designed to replace a bulky internal hard drive like this. This is the original DB25, or external model, and it's designed to replace an external hard drive like this. And if you had a Macintosh PowerBook laptop, you could even use a blue SCSI that was specifically designed for those, like this example by Androda. Now you really can't go wrong with either of these devices. One is meant for internal use and one is meant for external, but really for the cost of these things, I have one of each because it's so easy to just plug this in externally into a machine that I want to fix up or transfer files to, and I'm off to the races, rather than plugging this in, worrying if the disk still works, and worrying about bulky cables and external power, etc. Before we get too deep into the weeds, let me explain to you how a blue SCSI works and basically what it is. So, essentially, it's a hard drive emulator with a bunch of cool features added onto it. How this works is you have a connector, either a 50-pin internal or a DB25 connector, that plugs in inside or outside of your computer, like a vintage Macintosh or a PC, etc. A lot of clever coding and engineering has gone into the blue SCSI to make it imitate an actual SCSI hard drive. So when it's plugged into your computer, it's none the wiser that it's actually plugged into a blue SCSI. So where is your data stored? Well on a micro SD card. All you do is take this little SD card and slide it in, and now the SCSI bus is actually reading and writing data to your micro SD card. This makes it easy to swap operating systems or transfer files to and from different machines. All you do is swap that little micro SD card. Some models, like the Blue SCSI version 2 internal edition, use a full-size SD card slot. So all you have to do is get one of those SD card to micro SD card adapters, and you could use that same micro SD card across all of these devices. The Blue SCSI makes it super simple to store data, and that's because it uses disk images. All you have to do is place an appropriate file on your micro SD card and plug it in, and you're off to the races. 
Using disk images makes it so easy because you don't have to worry about the actual format of the SD card. A FAT32 or XFAT SD card works just fine, and the Blue SCSI does all the work with the help of those disk images to make sure that your vintage machine works perfectly. Let's say, for example, that I just bought this Macintosh computer. It doesn't have a working hard drive, so I want to replace it, and I don't have any boot media like floppy disks or CDs or anything like that. But that's okay, all I need is the blue SCSI and an SD card, and I could download a pre-made Macintosh hard disk image to put on the blue SCSI and boot up this machine perfectly. Most of these images are filled with an OS, games, applications, and plenty of stuff to get you up and running. But if you're like me and you like to waste time by installing operating systems using their original boot media, you could do that too. Then you could download disk images or create your own custom size disk images using an application like Disk Jockey. These images will appear as a blank hard drive to your system, meaning you could format them and perform an installation just like the good old days. As if creating three amazing and affordable external and internal SCSI solutions wasn't enough, the team has done it again and blew it out of the park with the Blue SCSI version 2. Here's an example of the DB25 or external model. I'm going to remove the case here. And as you can see, the little chipset here is a bit different. That's because the Blue SCSI version 2 runs on the Raspberry Pico architecture. All Blue SCSI version 2s have the same great features, but they do offer different types of SCSI ports to make it easier to connect to your vintage computers. First, you have the desktop model. This has an internal 50-pin connector on it and is designed to replace the hard drive from inside of your Macintosh or other compatible computer. Next, we have a DB25 model. This is designed to mimic an external hard drive and makes it super easy to just plug into a computer and transfer files or boot it up. This has a 25-pin connector here, which is very common on vintage SCSI computers of the day. I have the 3D case removed here to show you that this actually uses a micro SD card slot as opposed to the full SD card slot on the other model. I love using these external ones though because they are so convenient, especially when I'm working on vintage Macs like these. All I have to do is take my SD card, plug it into the blue SCSI, and plug this into the back of the system, and I could transfer files or even boot up the machine. And if you have a Macintosh PowerBook or another SCSI compatible notebook computer, you could use one of these. These models are designed to replace the 2.5 inch hard drive inside of your notebook computer. In most cases, the blue SCSI is self-powered. It taps into the SCSI bus to draw energy, whether it's plugged in internally or externally, to power itself. Now in some cases, earlier machines like the Macintosh Plus or some notebook computers require some external power. But that's okay, all you have to do is plug in a USB cable to the Raspberry Pico board here and it powers the entire system. You can even use a battery bank or something like that if you don't want to leave yourself tethered to the wall. Now the version 1 is still an excellent product, and it's perfect for many vintage Macintosh computers and other machines that has a SCSI connector on it. However, the version 2 gives you a lot of brand new features, some of which I'm thrilled to talk about today. First off is speed. These things are blazing fast. In fact, if you plug one of these into a power Macintosh computer with a fast SCSI bus, this thing will push the limit of that 10 megabyte per second bus. That's pretty darn crazy. But even if your vintage Mac or PC does not have a fast SCSI bus in it, these still work plenty fast over a standard SCSI connection. Next, we're going to be looking at some brand new beta features. Just keep in mind, these are work in progress. Now, if you're a Mac user, this next feature is really cool. Using some very cleverly built software, you could actually use a special blue SCSI application on the Mac OS to transfer files from the root of the SD card into the disk image that your blue SCSI is using on your vintage Mac. So let's say you already had your Mac up and running, you have your OS, you have games and applications, but you want to try out something new that you downloaded from Macintosh Garden on your modern computer. Just take that SD card, plug it into your modern system, and drag the file that you want to share with your vintage Mac into a special folder. Then plug that SD card back into your blue SCSI and boot up your Mac. Now launch this special utility and select the file that you want to transfer from your SD card to your Mac. It's just that simple. This next feature is really cool. It allows you to mount CD ISO images using your blue SCSI. All you have to do is drag the ISO file to the SD card and name it a certain way to tell the blue SCSI that this is a CD that you want to mount, but it gets even better. Let's say you have a game or an application that uses multiple CDs. Well, you can actually switch between those CDs easily. So without shutting down or restarting your computer, you could swap to the next CD just by dragging the current disk to the trash. 
and the blue SCSI will automatically mount the next CD that you have set up. Be sure to check out the blue SCSI documentation to find out more about how this functionality works. The blue SCSI version 2 also uses this Raspberry Pico controller chip, made by the same people who made the Raspberry Pi. This controller chip allows us to do some cool stuff that wasn't possible before. For example, we could utilize the 1.6 megabytes of flash storage on the Raspberry Pico to actually create a ROM drive. A ROM drive is a read-only memory partition, and although it's only 1.6 megabytes, that's plenty of space for a few crucial applications or even a system boot disk for a vintage Mac or PC. If you really want to be on the cutting edge, you could try soldering on a Raspberry Pico W board to your Blue SCSI instead of the standard Pico board. This lets you try out brand new Wi-Fi functionality. That's right, you could connect your vintage Mac to your wireless internet connection with the Pico W board and some fancy SCSI to Ethernet emulation. Now keep in mind, the basis of this emulation is the old DanaPort SCSI link from 1992. So don't expect to download anything like apps or drivers with it. I found anything beyond very small files or text documents to be too slow. This isn't designed to replace the Ethernet port on your Mac, However, it's perfectly fine for browsing the web, connecting to a BBS, or transferring text files over the network or web to a system that has no network port at all. Periodically, firmware updates are released by the Blue SCSI team to give us new features or to improve performance. And with the original Blue SCSI, updating firmware was kind of a hassle. However, I'm very happy to say that with the Blue SCSI version 2, updating the firmware is dead simple. To update the firmware, you simply download a file from the Blue SCSI website, hold down this little button on the Raspberry Pico board and plug in a USB cable that's connected to your system. The system will show this as a USB disk and all you have to do is drag and drop that firmware to the disk. When it's finished copying, this will automatically eject and reboot. You could also update the firmware via an SD card. Similar to the original Blue SCSI models, the Blue SCSI version 2 works on a variety of Macintosh, PC, and other systems. I'm just going to generally talk about the Macintosh compatibility today because that's what I'm most familiar with, although I am excited to test these out on other non-Mac systems. If you're curious about compatibility, check out the documentation on the Blue SCSI website for more information. Now I teased how fast the Blue SCSI 2 can be on Power Macintosh computers, so let me share some of the benchmarks and tests that I performed on a variety of systems. Now to make sure everything is on an even playing field for my performance tests, I'm using these PNY Elite X brand SD cards. These micro SD cards are rated at this speed, and they are overkill for what we need, but will provide us with plenty of speed to ensure that we can get the maximum performance out of our Blue SCSI version 2. Now you don't have to go out and buy the fastest SD cards, but keep in mind the better the card, the less wear on it, and the less use it has had will improve your performance. And since these are so cheap these days, it doesn't hurt to get a brand new one. Again, there's some documentation on the Blue SCSI wiki that includes some information about what to look for when you're buying a brand new SD card for your Blue SCSI. So I know what you're thinking. Just how fast is the Blue SCSI version 2 when compared to the Mac's original hard drive? or when compared to the original Blue SCSI? Well, to answer that question, I did a series of extensive benchmarks across six different Macs, using multiple disks and SD cards to ensure I got an even spread of results. In all, I tested six Macs, three 68K systems, and three PowerPC systems. And in fact, my tests were so intensive that a few of the original hard drives died shortly after. RIP. Now, benchmarks don't tell the whole story, of course. They're only a numeric representation of the maximum disk speed, which may not be achievable in all scenarios or under different system loads. In all my testing, though, the Blue SCSI, both the version 1 and 2, were super responsive and totally usable on every system I tested it with. It's also important to keep in mind that each Mac of this era used a different chip on the logic board to handle SCSI functionality. And since SCSI is the interface we're using for our hard drives, it's important to know the chip's maximum theoretical output. Apple still has a web page which details these SCSI data transfer rates, but the Mac's processor and data bus will also be important factors to be aware of. A Macintosh LC will likely perform slower than a Macintosh 2CI due to its slower system bus and older processor, even though the Mac LC came out later than the 2CI. With that being said, let's get started. First up, we have the Macintosh LC from 1990, sporting a 16MHz Motorola 68000 020 processor. 
Sadly, its 16-bit data bus isn't doing us any favors here, but it's trying. As you can see, the original Blue SCSI, while adequate, couldn't match the maximum speeds of the original hard drive. However, with the Blue SCSI version 2, that's no longer an issue. Although the LC can be a bit of a slouch, at least the bottleneck won't be on the Blue SCSI. Next up is the powerhouse Macintosh 2CI from 1989 with a 25MHz 68030 processor. Now, although its SCSI bus is limited to a slightly lower data rate than the LC, the faster processor and system architecture make up for it. The original Blue SCSI doesn't perform badly at all. In fact, most users probably won't see a real-world performance difference compared to the original hard drive. But again, with the Blue SCSI version 2 installed, we're surpassing the speeds of the original hard drive. Next, we have the Centra 650, Apple's business Macintosh for 1993. This was later renamed the Quadra 650, and these models were released with slightly different specs. This particular unit has a full 68040 processor with that math coprocessor built in. It's clocked at 25 megahertz and has a SCSI chip maxing out at about 5 megabytes per second. Here we see the original hard drive was pretty speedy and that the faster CPU and SCSI bus give the original blue SCSI a significant boost. But again, the blue SCSI version 2 reaches new heights, easily besting the original hard drive in both read and write speeds. Now let's enter the world of the Power Macintosh. This first-generation 6100 desktop has a PowerPC 601 processor clocked at 66 MHz with a 5 MB per second maximum SCSI output. You can see the original hard drive nearly saturates that SCSI bus. The original blue SCSI performs about the same as it did on the Centra 650, but overall, the blue SCSI version 2 gets close enough to the original hard drive that any speed difference would be negligible. Next up, we have the Power Macintosh 7500 from 1995. This has a PowerPC 601 processor running at 100 MHz. This model has a mesh SCSI bus claiming speeds of up to 10 MB per second on the internal port. In this case, you'll see that the blue SCSI version 2 bests the original hard drive, but there is an option to get even better performance when using an applicable Power Macintosh. Since we have a faster SCSI bus to play with, we can use a tool like FWB's Hard Disk Toolkit version 4.5. This lets us format the hard drive with a special FWB driver to take advantage of that faster SCSI bus. Once we do that, we can see the blue SCSI version 2 gets a very healthy speed boost, nearly doubling the read and write speeds of the original hard drive. This handy software can be found on MacintoshGarden.org. I'll put a link in the video description. Lastly, we have the Power Macintosh 8600 with a blazing fast 300 MHz 604E processor. This Mac doesn't appear on Apple's SCSI article, but it performs faster than the 7500 across the board. The original hard drive is quite quick, and while the blue SCSI version 2 is no slouch when it comes to general use, again, using FBW's hard disk toolkit driver, we see a considerable speed improvement, surpassing the original limits of that spinning hard drive. So what do these numbers mean? Well, simply put, the blue SCSI version 2 is fast. So fast that in most cases it'll meet or exceed the speed of your Mac's original spinning hard drive. So you could benefit from the reliability of a solid state storage device without missing out on any speed. Generally speaking, the faster your Mac, the more you'd notice the extra power and speed of a Blue SCSI version 2. The original model is still great for the Mac Plus, Mac LC, and similar models, but the Blue SCSI version 2 really starts to shine on Macs with the 68030, 68040, or PowerPC processor. So there you have it, the Blue SCSI version 2. I think it's a worthy upgrade from the original Blue SCSI. And don't get me wrong, the original model is still great, and they're still for sale, and they will still be supported. And I'm actually going to pick up a few of those for some of my systems, like my Mac Plus or Mac LC, that might not necessarily see the performance increase from the newer Blue SCSIs. However, some of these new features are fantastic, and I certainly hope that you check them out. Go to bluescuzzy.com for more information about where you could get a blue SCSI, and make sure you check out the documentation about compatible systems and all the information about those new features that I told you about. If you like these sorts of videos, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to the channel. You could also follow me on social media and support me on Patreon. But if you'll excuse me, I have to install these blue SCSIs into some crazy vintage Macs. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you right here next time on Mac84.